It's that time of year again, actually my favourite time of year to travel and camp. No mosquitoes, but just very, very cold, around minus 20 degrees C and dropping. And there's about 30 centimetres of powdered snow over the icy ground, so traction isn't that bad at all at the moment. My destination though is a natural spring full of trout, and a camp location I previously scoped out last summer. I've been a bit lazy so far with my tyre pressure, and I'm still on 30 psi, so the axle is hopping on inclines which isn't a good thing. I'm going to give it more speed on this one, and I'll drop to 7 psi for the rest of the journey. I probably should say hello. Hey guys, Mike here. Welcome back to another video on the channel. I was on my way to this little hut here, which is loaded with logs. I visited this in the summer. and I was pretty keen to do some ice fishing in this lake back there. You can see the center's not frozen. That's a natural spring and it's loaded with trout. And although every other lake around here is inches thick, that one isn't. I'm definitely not inches thick right now because it's minus 23 degrees C with 88% humidity. So it's gonna be a cold night and it's gonna drop even lower. But my main concern is getting this tree out of the way and I don't have a chainsaw or a saw big enough to tackle it. So I've got a plan. It's gonna involve a tree and it's gonna involve a snatch block. See how it goes. Take that as well. Daylight's a little bit of a luxury this time of year. It's gonna get dark in about two hours. So, and it's 11 o'clock. Let's see how that does, huh? Place your beds, place your beds, never gonna work, total waste of time. Right, I think the car's gonna get dragged.
I'm moving the snatch block further up to try and influence a break, or just get them out of the way a bit more. But these pines are still green, so some targeted break points with the axe should do the job. And on the plus side, these pines can replenish the firewood supply in this location for next year. <laughs> Oh shit. Every breath's like one of Frosty the Snowman's farts. Whew, it's cold. Don't want to work too hard in cold weather like this. It's uh, not unless you've got a way to warm up. Try again. some state-of-the-art tech with me not an inflatable device whose name we shall not mention may that's all rest in peace but uh pieces um but this one here is a uh, yeah a little hot water bottle just put a little thing on it so i can wear it under my jacket later if i get super cold mainly around the kidneys i suffer and uh where the cold creeps in but we will have that fire over there going so you probably won't need it but it's always good to chuck in the sleeping bag um, as I say, I do have a diesel heater, but I do not use that for sleeping. This is just for condensation in the morning um, because my garage isn't big enough to open the tent in and who knows when I'll be able to open it up in this weather. But I know if you watch regularly, you already know that, probably sick of hearing it, but a lot of new people watch and think that I rely on a diesel heater the whole winter. That would be very, very silly to be relying on something like that in these sorts of temperatures.
Despite my hunger, there isn't much daylight left and I really want to see what's biting or not biting at the small lake. I've eaten some chocolate and I've readied my gear and I'm heading back up the track I drove in on. This lake does require some caution though, as all other lakes in the area are frozen solid. This one in the middle is not. And it was also the last lake to freeze at the beginning of winter, while others were already inches thick. The water is also crystal clear unlike neighbouring lakes, and it's surprisingly deep at over 20 metres in some areas. But the fishing here has been really good, and we've nicknamed this lake the Gem, due to the blue light waters and white quartz lake bed. It's obviously a natural spring of some kind, but regardless I'm taking my time with the drilling, walking a few metres and checking again. With snow this thin though you can normally see thinner ice, but it's best not to take chances in these temperatures. Should really have the underwater drone here sometime. But have a little gandus. Sorry. Oh, probably can't see nothing. But a good day to fish because the sun's out a little bit. The snow's thin and so is the ice, so should get some light down there. Oh no, she switched off straight away, what a piece of shit. I won't drag this out, it's been pretty quiet on the fishing. I did however have one positive bite very early on, but it's been a ghost town since then. And the sun has set behind the hills, so it's only going to get colder. I'm going to go back to camp and start processing wood for the evening, warm up and make a hot drink. The axe is an unforgiving friend. I see a lot of people do this to get the axe going. Terrible technique. If you want to make kindling, you can just sit the axe like that and make sure you don't even actually have to have it against the, um, the handle of the axe and you, it's safe to put your thumb there if you're skilled enough, provided you hit it on the very, very edge of the contact point. If you start hitting it a little bit further up, you will create a trap for your thumb, but you can rest it there. If you don't care too much about the handle of the axe, it doesn't really do any damage. I rehung this uh, last year with a slightly longer handle, but it's just a tip for making kindling really and saving yourself an injury in these weather, in these weathers. Anyway, that's enough for now. Get a fire going. The ends of my fingers are like stumps. Better make a little raft. It's gonna get awful moist. So this should help initially. Just stop it getting wet. Almost a fail, a little hole.
Gonna build you up. All big and strong. Smoke signals for Bigfoot. He'll be coming in hot. <laughs> Got that. Well, that's the fire started, put some big logs on and in about 45 minutes when Evo's here it might be burnt down enough to be all right to cook on and do some food. But I'm gasping for a cup of tea, I haven't had one yet and I bought myself a lovely little stainless steel kettle and I was gonna predominantly this winter just be open fires because I kind of uh, prefer that this time of year but I flipping forgot it. So I'm gonna use the uh, the reactor stove, which kind of feels a bit like cheating when you've just made a fire. Zero degrees in the fridge, which is kind of a bit too cold. Try and warm things up a bit. There's nothing like a warm fire to make a camp feel complete. And given how cold it's going to get, this fire will be where we spend the majority of our time. Especially given that most of our luxuries will cease to function in these conditions. But the sun has almost set at the hour of 1500. And while I'm warming myself up by the fire, I hear the distant rumble of Ivo rolling into camp in his Land Rover Discovery 2. Well, Evo's just arrived in the Disco 2. He had no trouble getting in here, even on street tires, which is pretty good. But temperatures are really dropping off. So I think once he's got set up, I won't assault him with the camera just yet, because he's literally just getting his stuff together. I'll carry on stoking the fire and try and get some dinner ready for us. But he did bring some rum and some chocolate, so. Necessities of life. <laughs> he's done well. <laughs> Cold. What is it now on the thermometer? It says minus 19, minus 20. Yeah, and it's only going to go down from there. Yeah. It's clear sky <laughs> now, mate. Might be able to see the northern lights. I hope so. I think it will be from there. Or something. How's your cool. setup? Are you happy with your setup anyway? Yeah, I like this it. This is the so coldest far. for you, isn't it? This is the coldest to date. I think so. Yeah. Minus 20. Yeah. Well, it'll be about think minus 24. Huh? Or five, I think it said online. When? Now? Tonight, yeah. Oh yeah, well the apps are always wrong here. They're always like a yeah. few degrees off. I think it's got to yeah. be like, yeah, something like that probably. It so. probably will be pretty cold, won't it? Cold so far as minus 15, I think. Well, that is still extremely cold. It's just when yeah. it, I've always find that when it sort of drops below, below 20, things start to get uh, just, just different level. Yeah, yeah, it just starts to change. Yeah. There's a lot of downtime in winter camping, mainly because the evenings start just after three o'clock in the afternoon. We spend most of our time by the fire, talking, stargazing, cooking food, and in this case, sipping rum. It's pretty much a perfect evening when it comes to cold weather camping. 
and as the evening settles in, temperatures plummet, and we both turn in a bit early to our rooftop tents, in our arctic sleeping bags, for an early night. Well, it's an extremely cold morning at minus 24 degrees C. I'm not sure what it was last night, but it was definitely below the 20s. You know, you can kind of tell really just with the air that you're breathing and everything struggling. We've called out to each other already just to make sure we're both alive and uh, we're having technical tr troubles really. I wanted to um, just fire up the diesel heater this morning just to warm the inside up and um, try and get the camera batteries warmed up, which is the main problem. Although I slept with most of the stuff really to dry it off and also to keep it warm there's only so much room in this bag that's kind of why relying on electronics in these temperatures is just absolutely pointless evo's ecoflow batteries packed up i don't know what's going on with my stuff but it's it's all struggling but i was really warm last night despite the temps this is a quest star so minus 18 rated bag and it's inside this bag here which is kind of like my main bag that i use in the summer and the autumn and everything else and the two bags together work really well because this one's extremely spacious so you can kind of pack all the gear in it like even this little onesie thing uh, for diving and stuff was in there and um this one goes inside so you've got kind of room to put all your clothing in there as well and all the batteries and stuff and try and keep it warm but uh pretty sure evo um had a visit from bigfoot in the night so he was probably nice and warm how you doing yeah good Are you cold no i'm fine actually you just don't want to get out of the bag <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, mentally preparing, I guess. But I'll get a fire going and we can, uh, we can stay warm, but it is snowing. Really hungry. Need some pancakes. Lovely. Yeah. This trip has been good already. Just like it's a learning, how do you say, learning curve? Yeah. Because I've, I've seen what things are failing with these temperatures. Yeah. I need to do something with my uh, with my bedding. I was warm enough, but um, I needed to have my my clothes on. You've got a Dutch army bag, yeah. That's the three part. Yeah. What is bag. it called? M90. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Were you so, were you warm in it, or were you on just on the, the tipping point? Uh, with clothes on, I was on on the on the tipping point. Okay. Well, I, I I had I was like warm, but I had like moments that it was like suddenly started to like feel cold a little bit, and then it disappeared, like because it was fighting fighting each other. Yeah. Okay. Cold in the, in the one. But uh, I mean, I slept. You you could always get another cheaper bag, like because you know these technical winter sleeping bags are really expensive. I mean, they're crazy money. So you could always get like just a even the same outer bag that I've got, and you could just put your Dutch army one in it, and yeah. already you'll add a lot of a lot of insulation. This thing has a uh, has a bag for where you want to sleep outside. Maybe I'll just a bivy bag. Yeah, yeah they're I not guess. so. It's not it really good. It doesn't do anything, I guess. But well, it's for moisture. I mean, it will obviously offer wind protection and a bit more thermal, a little bit more. But in these conditions, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not it's not going to do a huge amount, but. It's all the electronic stuff that goes, isn't it? Like all yeah. our batteries and all the luxuries just die. And, and then you, you rely on it with these calls, because otherwise, I mean... You can't rely on it. No, but you need to. 
kind of. What, rely on the electronics? Well, a little bit, yeah. Like already, like the engine heater, like. That's true. Yeah, yeah the engine heater, which is which is not. You, cold starting the diesels in minus 24 is not. It's not good for the engine. And also when you're out for multiple days, and with these cold, like your battery at some point, di like your phone dies. I meant to say. Yeah. Like your phone dies, and it's that's kind of a safety thing. A phone, like when shit happens, like you, when stuff happens, <laughs> you wanna you wanna. Yeah, maybe yeah, be able yeah to it's, it's emergency stuff, isn't it? Yeah, you know? in that way it's important as well, I think. I think if you can, if you've still got the basics though, like you've got good technical stuff like insulation, like the bag and everything, yeah. and you are able to make fires and you're not relying on lighters and you're using ferrocerium rods and yeah. you can use an axe and a knife and a saw and you can snowshoe and hike and you've got a shovel. It's all those sorts of tools, I think, that you always go back to yeah you know you know like the, the fancy shit like the eco flow batteries and the diesel heater and all this sort of like these luxury things yeah they will fail but like, they always fail don't they this will always work yeah i mean the only thing for me is like filming for youtube like i'm even more dependent on these batteries and things because i need to charge stuff and i also rely on the diesel heater to sort of warm the inside of the tent up so i can put the camera in and everything and the drone and all that when it gets too cold and like create a warm room because so, the battery if i let this camera switch off it'll never turn on again mm. obviously it will another day but not <laughs> yeah not not today no. not today but um yeah and, and the inside of the tent is ice yeah so it's, it's nice to frosted. warm it up before you pack it up yeah it's nice to do these things and then get home and just unpack the things you normally unpack and then just put it away and walk away from it but now we've obviously got way more stuff to sort out yeah and we're planning on going away for a week aren't we <laughs> i i think i'll get i can get five days with work five days yeah i don't know a week but... no i can probably do about the same i can't really do a week five days will work but that's five days of this you know we're really gonna have to to get our stuff together yeah a little bit yeah can't be yeah. dependent on the battery stuff i mean I, I don't know if i can even film five days of or, or we have a lucky week where there's some like minus 12 because now it's double yeah which is a which is a level up i think if we do go away if it's minus 10 i'm it'll be so much more enjoyable than minus 20 than below minus 20 because yeah. like now like you've put the you just put the oil bottle away from the fire a bit and it's and it's just freezes. gone you yeah. know straight away the water's gone you know you're yeah. taking snow and everything so yeah and uh, yeah also like i don't know if you put the snow in your in your can and, and it and it's melt like what you're left with is like <laughs> nothing yeah when it's done you gotta keep doing it yeah it takes yeah. takes a lot longer yeah it does take a lot longer man my feet are so much warmer now that is just making the, the, the pancake again. batter took me like 20 minutes yeah i had reservations about this all powers unit some people said they're not that great but in all fairness it's minus 24 degrees c the two eco flows have packed up so i've given it an hour of engine warming which is 50 percent of this battery see how it goes Definitely not the worst startup I've heard. Could have done with a bit longer warming up though. I think I think a couple of hours really would have been good. There's definitely water in the diesel though, I can see it. And that is a major problem. I have no idea how that's got in there because I always fill up with a premium station that all the forest machines and everyone, all the businesses use around here. And uh, it's not from a regular pump. You pay a bit more for it, it's white diesel. But it means I've got to drop the tank. I've got to drop the tank and I've got to clean it all out. And that's 100 litres of diesel almost. So at least now that the engine's running, I should be able to put some uh, some juice back in one of these batteries here. At least this one. See if it charges. The other one I've got is not charging. It's charging. 102 watts. 134. 
133, 134 watts, that's pretty damn good. Oh, I got up to 146. Ivo's 2000 watt auxiliary battery in the rear is refusing to charge due to the temperatures and this is normally what he would use to preheat his engine so we're using the all powers unit to try and preheat the coolant prior to start up. Oh, so you've got jump cables, will we find them? I'll jump start. So a new thermostat, new battery, <laughs> nice. It's been a good camp. Yeah. <laughs> the short drives to work and back, coupled with the freezing temperatures, have had an impact on Evo's battery. It's going to need some help in the short term, and probably replacement in the near future. By any chance, have you been oh. trying to charge the Black Mamba off your landy? You weren't supposed to tell that, I think. That's how frozen this is. While waiting for the battery to get some charge, I'm going to put some air back in my tyres, around 17 psi. This is just to save some time when we get to the end of the trail later, but it still maintains some off-road performance and will give me a good footprint in the snow on the way back. stand on this bit of snow I look almost am I are they gonna see my face or is it no, just no, from no, the neck just down see that button there yeah. put a face on it <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah well this is it we've been out here pretty much well well not long but like not not a huge amount it's just been one one night really but I think it's enough considering how cold it's gonna be getting even colder tonight minus 28 oh. tomorrow it's gonna be in the 30s so I think we're out of here really in the nick of time um, this was already a big test for everything yeah and basically everything electronic kind of failed didn't it even keeping yeah. this camera camera kit going the drone just packed up and almost dropped out the sky you know just just doesn't like it so you know an old fire and some good sleeping bags and basically that's what's going to get you through it i think with these cold nights not not all this you late. need a fire or you'll you'll die yeah like literally I need to get a new saw because I've just got my little Baco Laplander because my silky saw is just totally dead I mean it's over 12 years old but um, I think if I get another I might get another silky and I, I do enjoy using those but you like the bow saw don't you? I like, yeah well yeah well I have a little Baco the Laplander one I like yeah. that one it's just when I walk but like near near like a camp, I, I got this uh, also back by the way. The, um, yeah, yeah. the big orange one, the boat saw. Yeah. Well, it's a beast. Yeah, it's cool. I need to get some stuff like that, mate. I, I, I hope we can get out of here.
Yeah, I just heard it. Yeah, I just thought that's why I lost lost my attention for a second. What was that? I don't know. I think that is. Have you pop the hood. It doesn't stop. Have you pop the hood. Yeah, but uh, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll just end this video here unless yeah, something okay. amazing happens. But um, <laughs> thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Just want to say a big thanks to Patreons for supporting the channel, and uh, we'll be out again soon doing another. Uh, winter adventure hopefully a bit milder maybe minus 10 minus 15 yeah. it's a little bit more doable although i i mean i like the challenge this is what i like yeah. like the challenge of this it's uh yeah it's uh way more difficult than in the summer <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely summer well, is 10 and uh there's no mosquitoes there and you can just take a dump wherever you want without them biting your ass that's so true. that's yeah. a major plus yeah. of the winter but anyway see you soon in another one all right well, everything was going fine and, and then suddenly plumes of white smoke poured out the exhaust and the engine was dying and um, i'd mentioned earlier in the video i suspected water in the diesel and i think that is exactly what it is you can actually see some frozen in the bottom of the, the bottom of the inspe inspection glass just there not that that should uh kind of stop it really from running but perhaps I don't know, perhaps it's now the angle of the vehicle or something to do with the pickup of the tank. There must be water. There's water in the tank, mate. I've got to drop the tank, basically, but I need to get home. Um, I'll put this back on and hopefully, hopefully it, it revives itself, but the filter's got corrosion on it, which is definitely not a good sign. I wish I had a spare fuel filter. Yeah. It's definitely water in the fuel. More importantly, we need to get out of here now before it happens again. Well, the Jeep just about made it off the trail, but not the journey home. Fortunately though, Ivo's towing me back to the workshop or I can get the tank off and drain it. It's a bit of a shame to end the journey with such technical failures, but it's also a good reminder of what these conditions can mean if you're on your own out here. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time, hopefully without water in the tank.